Hi, my name is Robert Stinnett. I'm here today to talk to you about the various protection options as available in the new Windows 7 operating system from Microsoft. So let's take a look at a few of them. The first thing we're going to look at is called previous versions. Here I'm on my C drive. I've typed up a memo to my company. I go to open it. And oh no, the mad typist has stroke again. Up, oh, and the typist is a bad speller. He spelled strikes wrong. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is, you know, normally I'd have to go and retype this entire memo. Thankfully, with something called previous versions, I don't have to. I simply exit out of Word, go to the folder which my memo's in, right-click on it, say Restore Previous Versions, and here I'm given a list of previous versions of this file. Previous versions of files get created two ways in Windows 7. When you create a restore point, which you can either do manually or many install programs do now for you automatically, or when you take a system backup, which we'll talk about in a little bit. So when I find the version of the file that I want, I can either open it, restore it, or copy it to a new name. I just want to see what's in this file, so I'm going to go ahead and open it. And I can see that yes, this is the memo that I want. It has all my information up to my stopping point. So now I'm going to hit my restore button. It says, are you sure you want to restore this? Of course. Now, if I go back to my computer in my folder, and open this file up, I can see I now have my original version restored and ready for use. This works with not only Microsoft Word but most any file type. <clears throat> um, you configure this by going to your control panel, go down to System, you want to hit advanced system settings system protection and you want to make sure that protection is turned on for that drive so let's talk a bit about protection while we're here system protection is a way that Windows not only can keep previous versions of files but it can also keep previous versions of your system settings this is how the restore option works in Windows 7 you can turn on three different options for a drive system settings and previous versions only previous versions of files or none at all for the drive in which you have windows installed it's a good idea to make sure you have the first one selected restore system settings and previous version of files this way if something should go wrong you install a program that damages your operating system you can easily restore and get things back the way they were quickly and easily you can also choose how much space you want to allocate. Windows man gives you 5% by default. This is normal for most people as hard drives nowadays are rather large. However, you can choose this to any selection you want. Now, while we're here, we're talking about System Restore. You'll see above here there is a button called System Restore. Let's say I'd made a mistake. I just booted into Windows and things aren't going right. What I can do, even if I don't want to go this far to find it, is from my desktop, I can right click on my start menu, I can go to control panel, there it is at the top, backup and restore. You can see here, I haven't set a backup yet. Oh, that's not good. But to be fair, most of us don't. This is something we're not very good at, though we should get better at it. But what I can do is I wait a minute. I know I created a restore point yesterday when I installed that program. So I can go to recover system settings, open system restore, go to next, and now I can get a whole list of things I've done both manually and automatic to my system. You're going to notice over here updates always create a restore point. Installs, most installs, always create a restore point. 
So let's say I know that after I installed this DirecTV uh, program, that I have something's not right, right, right with my system. I have two options here, which I've selected this. I can scan for affected files, which will tell me anything that has been uh, affected by uh, uh, this install and things that have happened since I have installed. Because remember, when you go back to this, you're not only going to restore to that point in time, but anything that's happened afterwards is going to be impacted and probably erased from the system. It's important to note, System Restore will never erase things like Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, text files, pictures, etc. It will only affect system settings and programs. It tells me here, if I go ahead and, and go back to this restore point on the 25th of September, I stand the risk of losing, or I will lose, Camtasia Studio, which I've installed since then, and programs I have uninstalled since then, such as Bonjour or Time and Expense and other direct use stuff, have the potential of being restored and may not work correctly. This is an excellent way, as soon, if you install a program and discover something's going wrong, this is an excellent way to go in here and immediately try and restore it. So this is also a great tool to remember that you always have available, no matter, you don't have to do anything. Windows will do this automatically, keep track of this. We're not going to go ahead and restore, so at this point I'm going to cancel out. If we should continue going forward, you would see screens that confirm that this is what you want to do, and then you would see action items and automatic reboots as it takes care of restoring. The final thing I'd like to talk to you today about, we're going to go click out of here, go back to our control panel, go to backup and restore. I want to talk to you about two options which you may not be familiar with. System image and system repair disk. In the past, if you wanted to create a system image, you'd have to buy a custom program from a third party manufacturer, such as Norton Ghost or other programs out there. With Windows 7, you can create an image of your entire hard drive on either DVDs to another hard drive, separate physical hard drive that may exist in the system, or to a network location. Why would you want to do this? A lot of people, when they install Windows, they get everything set up the way they want. They get all their programs installed, all the tools they use, then they create a system image. So when something should ever go wrong, instead of starting over from, you know, the basic building blocks of installing Windows from there, they can just go back. This literally will restore a computer at the exact moment in time the image was taken. So any Excel spreadsheets, Word documents, text files, pictures, movies will not be there when you restore this image. They have been created after the image was created. So that's an important difference note between this and System Restore. This is a much uh, thorough way of making sure that you really go back to that point in time. This will be what the system looks like at that exact second it started the image in time. A system repair disk. Now, an image doesn't do you much good if you can't get to it. So a system repair disk will create a bootable disk, a CD or DVD, that you can boot off of and it'll help you recover those image files. You should always create one of these as one of the first things you do before you create your system image. Our final topic, of course, is Windows Backup, something that very few people do. I'm not going to go delve too deep into this. There are a few new options that have been available that some people may not recognize or they've been moved around a little. I can now back up to network drives. Of course, I can back up to CDs or DVDs or to other physical hard drives. I would highly suggest that you at least look at creating restore points and at least one system image. For backups, I highly recommend either Windows Home Server for automatic backups or backing up to the cloud through such services uh, such as Carbonite.com and others. I'm Robert Stinnett. I hope you've enjoyed this short description of the backup and system restore capabilities of Windows 7.